This video was sponsored by Zently. Here I'm going to cover my experience as an entry-level engineer right out of college. I graduated in electrical engineering with a bachelor's, and I'm only two years out of college and was not at this job for too long, so just remember this does not represent all engineering jobs or paint the full picture or anything, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what one entry-level job is like. Now the company I was at worked on a lot of defense projects, but my department was focused on communication systems for satellites. So they built, tested, and designed antennas that allow satellites to talk to each other and to ground stations. At this job, I did have my own office rather than working in a cubicle, and I spent around 80% of my time on the computer and 20% in a lab doing testing, and I'll talk about both of these. The first two months or so of this job was all on the computer though. My first assignment I got on day one of the job was to code an antenna error calculation program using MATLAB. Basically a program where you can input the shape of an antenna and it will tell you the error you can expect relative to a perfectly shaped parabolic one. Because in the real world there will be little imperfections on the surface, and when you're talking about electromagnetic waves of very small wavelengths reflecting off the antenna, every little bit counts. Now I did not make the program from scratch, in fact most of it was done by the time I started working on it, but there were still problems with it that I had to fix. We had data in which we knew what the output was supposed to be, so I had to keep tweaking the program until it spit out those expected values. When I started with it, it kept giving a small error. For this, I also had to read some articles about mathematically how antenna errors were determined, which is what the program was based off of. These were very technical, had a lot of math, and took a lot of time to just get a grasp on. Then I had to look through the code and see if something didn't match up, like did they just forget a negative somewhere, were matrices not being multiplied correctly, and so on. It was up to me to find that, and it wasn't a quick solution after all. Then I want to stress this next part. When I first looked at the program that had been started before me, I was very confused on what was going on. I mean, I knew a little and had done some programming in MATLAB, but I was by no means an expert. I was honestly confused how they expected me to fix what was wrong, but that's the nature of some jobs. You do a lot of learning on the job. I've said in a video before that a bachelor's degree in engineering gives you a broad background and you don't really become an expert in anything, and this is one example of what I mean. I thought I'd get my degree and just dive into the workforce knowing what I'm doing, but it wasn't like that. I was confused to begin and knew from the beginning there was a lot to learn, but I got the hang of it after a while. I also had no formal training at this job, where you have a higher up teach you the things you need to know, like hardware or software that the company uses. I did have mentors though who were supposed to help me and would say, let me know if you need help with anything. So I could ask for help, but of course I didn't want to constantly be bugging them. But I've actually never had formal training at any job, which still to this day surprises me. I had assumed most jobs train you for the first day or a few days or maybe even weeks on what you need to know. I'm sure this is not representative of all jobs, but I want to pass this question on to any of you watching who have had internships or full-time jobs. Comment below whether in the beginning you had formal training or whether you just had to learn it on your own, or maybe with the occasional help from a mentor or boss, because I don't know what the majority of people have seen. Going back though, I did get the hang of the program and after it was working I had to present it to my boss and a few others. Then after the presentation was done, I had to go back and write a document detailing what I changed, how to run the program, I had to make a GUI or graphical user interface that made it super easy for the next person to know what to do. But my job did involve a lot of documenting what I had done, kind of like a lab report in a way which I discussed in another video. Again, this was probably the first two months of my job, then I moved on to testing which was more interesting. I did testing of satellite antennas which is done in something called an anechoic chamber. Those blue triangle things you see absorb electromagnetic waves so there's no reflection while you're testing the signal. Anechoic chambers can be small like this one here, or extremely large for testing the antenna while on maybe an aircraft. I actually did testing in a small room and also a big room. Before any testing could be done we had to do a lot of setup. That platform you see had to be perfectly centered so when it started turning and collecting data, it knew where its center should be. Also we had to connect all the necessary cables and implement any safety precautions. Remember, at certain companies, you can be working with hardware that costs thousands to millions of dollars. This was a lot of hands-on stuff to begin, then once it was ready, we could actually begin testing the equipment. Basically what happened was a transmitter, which you saw in the picture on the left above, and a receiver, not shown, were pointed at each other. Then the transmitter would rotate side to side over various angles, and the receiver, which was fixed in place, would measure how strong the signal it received was. As the two devices pointed further from each other, the signal of course got weaker. So we could determine things like the half power beam width, or essentially, as the transmitter turned, at what angle from its centered position would the received signal be at half power from what the maximum was. This was just one of the many things we had to analyze. 
And we ran many tests, which usually took a few hours of having the platform turn and take measurements. Then we'd tweak something and do it again. Afterwards, we'd have a lot of data, but lots of it was just in table form, giving data on angles, signal strength, and more. So we'd have thousands of points, but it wasn't very useful as it was. So I had to export it to Excel and make plots so we could analyze things about the transmitter, which is another reason for so much computer time. Even for testing, it did involve computer work. Again, with testing, there were some things I just didn't understand at first, even though I did have a background in them. For example, half power beam width was one thing we had to determine, but another thing we had to determine was axial ratio. Don't worry about what that is for now, but it's just another antenna parameter that's important to know, which I did learn briefly in school. I had to determine it for this antenna we were working on, and at first I wasn't quite sure how to do it based on the data we got. I had to do some mathematical manipulation in Excel before I could get this data, and I wasn't quite sure how to do it, so I did get some help to fully understand the big picture. But after some practice, I got the hang of it. It's just another instance of school giving me that broad background where I had the foundation, then going into the workforce, I still needed some on-the-job learning to figure out how to relate the concepts to the software, data, or whatever it was that the company used. After I made the plots, I determined whether the parameters met specifications. Like the gain of the antenna had to be within a certain number, or the axial ratio had to be less than a certain number, and so on. Then we put the antenna in another testing area where it was on a very high up platform in which I got to go up in one of those lifts to make sure all the cables and other hardware was set up properly. And this was a lot of going up and down during the testing process. There was many weeks of this as well. And we tested one antenna so many different ways in different environments and with different methods. To summarize, these next few months were just about running proper tests, making plots, analyzing plots, making sure the antenna met specifications, and then documenting everything we had done. The antenna would not be ready for use until it met specifications. To put emphasis on how accurate this antenna needed to be, if the signal transmitting was at one tenth of a degree off, we could not use the device. It had to be more accurate. Now a lot of learning I had to do for testing came from manuals, as in I'd be given this huge manual of how the satellite or communication system worked, and my coworkers would tell me to learn as much as I could. I don't know if this is normal, but I had to do it, and yes, some of this was boring, but some parts were fun. Like I got to read up on how antennas tracked each other and the kind of math and signal analysis that goes into making one antenna follow another automatically from miles away, which I actually found really cool. So as you can see, the job did have interesting aspects and there were times where I was doing tedious plotting of data or reading manuals that wasn't as fun, but that's how any job will be. And that's why I also said in the beginning that this was an entry level job and it's just the beginning and does not represent all engineering jobs. And even though I'm still young, I did get to see a lot of what my coworkers were working on, and some of their projects looked really interesting. So things also do improve with time. Now moving on to less technical info, my salary for this job starting out was $76,560 per year. Yes, this was high for an engineer starting salary, but I was living in Los Angeles, which has high rent, and California has pretty high state taxes. I said in another video on my salary that I'll link below that getting roommates can be a huge money saver, especially in situations like mine. And before moving on, this is actually where I'd like to thank Zently for sponsoring this video. Zently is an app that allows you to easily split rent, utilities, food, and more between you, your roommates, and friends. You can set up recurring payments, and on top of that, you can easily send repair requests to your landlord when something isn't working. This makes the rental process much easier and I highly recommend it. Plus one person will be entered to win a month of free rent by just paying their rent through Zently. And links are in the description below. Now going back, the job was on a 980 schedule which in my opinion was really nice. And I'm sure many people have not heard of it. This is where for one week you work Monday through Thursday for 9 hours each day instead of 8. Then on Friday you work 8 hours. So you have a 44 hour week which is longer than normal but the next week you work Monday through Thursday for nine hours each day, and then you get Friday off, and this pattern repeats. So that's 36 hours, which adds up to 80 hours in two weeks, or 40 hours per week on average, a normal full-time job. But this way you get a three-day weekend every other week. Not every company does this, but I thought it was really nice. I also had a lot of meetings that were mainly for my benefit as the new guy, where other coworkers who had been working there for a while gave presentations on what they were working on. This is where I got to ask questions and learn about more projects at the company. And it showed me just how much you can get into as an engineer just at my one department. Plus how the more you work, the more flexibility you have with the projects you work on. I was required to dress business casual so I wore slacks and a button down most days, but did not have to wear a tie. And lastly, notice how I was not doing any of the design work. 
You may think engineers do all these initial designs, like I thought I might be a part of making from scratch the newest communication devices and figuring out how to effectively prevent signal blocking and all that stuff. But those people had way more experience, at least at this company, and you worked your way up to those positions. But with testing and all the technical writing that I did, you can see how there's so much more to an engineering project than you may think. One thing I would do differently if I could go back is specifically ask questions during my interview about what I would be doing at the company, because I really did not know what to expect and I don't think that should be a surprise to you. So if you don't want to work at a computer all day, which by the way you may just end up doing to begin, make sure you ask that at the interview. If you want to work in testing, then ask them if that can be expected. Ask what a typical day for you will be like, ask what your first week will look like, and so on. I remember only caring about just getting a job at first, but it is good to be prepared. Now I'm going to end there, hopefully this gave you an idea of what an engineer could do starting out, but remember I am just one person, and from talking with friends I have heard a million stories of what people do at their job and what their responsibilities are. No one story can represent everyone, but this was mine. If you like this video don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.